Continuing now with A News at 5 on board the USS Ronald Reagan, a ship named for a revered American president. Sir Winston Churchill, uh, of course, was a revered British politician and made waves in Victoria long before he did so conquering the Nazis in the Second World War. It was 80 years after Churchill's brief visit to Vancouver Island that we find his admirers are as ardent as ever with a major event coming up this weekend. The mystique and the admiration remain. Tonight, A News reporter Shachi Curl retraces Sir Winston's steps on an historic and uh, a still-remembered trip to the island. <laughs> we shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. We shall defend our island. A decade before Winston Churchill's defense of his island would make him an icon larger than life, he stepped foot on this island. In 1929, Winston Churchill was not yet the roaring lion, the legend who led an empire against Nazi tyranny. He was a politician out of power, former Chancellor of the Exchequer, former First Lord of the Admiralty. But he was the biggest thing to hit sleepy Victoria in a long time, and he liked it here too. Could I conclude my tour of the Dominion, then Victoria, where I'm reminded on every side of this small island from whence I came. Chris Gaynor is a historian and former journalist who has retraced Churchill's steps on a three-day trip that almost didn't happen. The trip to Victoria was a bit of an add-on. I think he was talked into it by the uh, lieutenant governor of the time. Churchill arrived Wednesday, September 4th, 1929 at the Belleville Street dock. His son Randolph was with him. First stop, the legislature, where the naval commander poured over old war maps, then on to CFB Esquimalt and the Navy dry dock. In those days, the best, most modern facility on the Pacific coast. He stayed at Government House, the guest of honour at two dinner parties with the creme de la creme of Victoria society, before wowing a crowd of 800 at a luncheon at the Empress Hotel. You either loved him or hated him. And uh, it was only after, after he'd uh, uh, served as the Prime Minister in the war that a lot of the people who didn't like him, you know, change their minds. And even though prohibition wasn't in effect here in Canada, local drinking laws were still pretty strict. So Churchill was served his favorite tipple in a teapot. We know so many things about Winston Churchill, his legendary gift for writing, his oratory, his temper, his shrewd war tactics. What many of us didn't know he was also a master bricklayer, a mason, who took up an offer to lay a stone at Christ Church Cathedral, then under construction. That if the British Empire and its Commonwealth last for a thousand years, men will still say, this was their finest hour. Churchill's visit provided Old Victoria with many of its finest hours that September 71 years ago. He did one last thing before sailing for Seattle. He planted a hawthorn tree in Beacon Hill Park. This is it. Every year, members of the Churchill Society of Vancouver Island gather here. This weekend, they'll gather for a dinner to hear more about a leader who shaped our times. If it wasn't for him, uh, you might be uh, delivering your newscast in uh, beautiful German. So uh, um, we like to look down our snoots at, 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 at politicians, but uh, he's, he, he's one that people look up to. Politics and politicians have changed a lot, but if our elected representatives were ever to be inspired into a better version of themselves, they need only come back to this place where Churchill set down roots so many years ago. In Victoria, Shachi Curl, A News.